<laughs> hey everyone, it's Ansley here from Team Music Insider, and today I'm with Davis Mallory. <laughs> You were on the show, MTV's uh, Real World Denver. How did you get onto the show? Like, what was the process like? So I auditioned my senior year of college. I was 21 years old. Um, I drove to a bar in Tampa, Florida, got a number, sat around for several hours until they called my number. And I had one question asked to a group of 10 people, which was, why should I pick you to be on The Real World? And I said, well, I just came out, I'm gay. My family wasn't really supportive. And that was my shot. And I don't think he really, I don't wanna make this a long answer, but I don't think he thought that was that unique. So he didn't give me an application and he just kept moving forward. He gave one person out of the group of the 10 of us an application and it was this loud black girl that was just a big personality. And I stuck around afterwards, after he finished talking to her, and I went over to him and tried to talk to him a little bit longer and he gave me like a sympathy application and uh, that's how I got on. He, he, I think I filled out a bunch of questions in really funny ways and he read the questions and he called me back the next day for a second round of auditions and, and I got on. So. Oh, nice. What was it like being on the show? Um, you know, it was, it was weird at first because I woke up in the morning my very first day and there was a woman cameraman filming me over my face and I walked to go to the bathroom to brush my teeth and she was just walking filming me it was really strange they said at the beginning they try to film you a lot more often just to get you comfortable and then they back off and film you less often so that you're but at the beginning it's like it's getting you conditioned to being camera on camera all the time um so that was like the psychological process yeah definitely and the roommates I had were really fun and outgoing and we were all drinking and partying so yeah awesome uh, it gets interesting but you i get where uh, they're coming from for sure uh what did you gain from that experience well i think it was interesting because it was the it put me on television so from like a grand scheme uh, from a grand stage like i think that show at the time had about four million viewers so i would walk around the united states and people would recognize me on the street um which was strange I would go to nightclubs and people would want to take photos with me. Um, so I felt famous for a little while. <laughs> Definitely. So you uh, recently reached uh, your new single, Loud. How did this song come about? Yeah, so I had met a writer that I wrote that song with. His name is Mitchell Rose. We'd written about three songs before Loud. And I just started working with a publicist out of New York who represents RuPaul's Drag Race, among other people. And he was listening to a lot of my demos. Every time I'd write a song, I would email it to him. And he's like, Davis, I think you need to write something that's kind of sexy. And he really wanted me to do like a shirtless photo shoot like Nick Jonas has done or Justin Bieber has done. So when I was writing loud, I was trying to write something sexy for myself. Um, and I brought that into the co-write and Mitchell played piano and I, we sang melodies. And I, re I referenced Zane's Pillow Talk because that was uh, like number one song in the united states when we wrote it so the fact that my song has fuck in it and that his does was one of the reasons i was like well i bet this could get played on radio because his song has fuck in it um, <laughs> yeah. so. Nice. so what's the uh, meaning of the song i think i was no so i'm gay i've already said that but there was a uh, there was a guy i had a crush on that i think that song was subconsciously about um we had, were writing partners. It wasn't the guy I wrote the song with. It was a different guy. Um, I, I was at a pop music night in Nashville, and he was performing. He was really good, really cute guy. And uh, I made my way into his life as a songwriter, and we started writing songs together. And every time we wrote, I couldn't tell if he liked me or if he didn't like me, because he was just, and now he has a girlfriend, and he's been with her for over a year, and I guess he's straight. But uh, I think I wrote loud kind of, in a time when I liked him, I didn't know how to express the way I felt about him, so I put it to music. Okay, cool. So the music video just got released as well. What's the process yeah. of creating one of your music videos, and how did the idea for the one come about? Yeah, so the song, um, the video is, is by one of my long-standing friends who's done about 
three or four music videos for me now. Uh, his name is Derek Lipschitz, and I met him when I lived in New York. Um, I used to work for Astroworks Records, which is Halsey's record label. Um, it's also David Guetta and Swedish House Mafia's label. And we hired Derek to do some of our video work because he was really good. Um, he was a New York-based videographer. So when I decided to make the video for Loud, I flew him down from New York to make it for me. And he's just like a creative genius. He just hears a song and he'll throw an idea out. He loves to watch really like creative artistic music videos all the time. So he's always pointing me to other stuff that he's seen that he thinks is cool that people are doing. So he showed me a music video and it was just kind of weird. Like people were behaving like robots and it was very, it was similar color scheme, kind of like pinks and blues, like my video is. So we watched that. I rallied up everyone who was involved in the creation of Loud. So the music producers are in my music video wearing lion masks. And then I casted some pretty girl dancers and I feel like they're kind of like my Bond girls. And then we went to a costume shop and we were trying to buy some props and I'm a Leo and I've always resonated. And I've always had this dream that when I go on tour, I would have people dancing on stage as lions and like lion costumes. So we bought lion and wildcat masks and we put them on the guys and I brought my cat. We just started getting creative and weird and started filming and it was an evening and we filmed it at the Nashville Film Institute, which is a film school here in this infinity white room, every, every wall is white and just got creative. Nice, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, how did it uh, feel to finally release your uh, new song? It was good. It was, um, it was good. I hired, a, I was working with LGBT publicity company that does the RuPaul's Drag Race people. Their name is Project Publicity. Um, and so they helped me get some premieres, uh, which is actually how I'm talking to you guys. Um, and I released the single on April 25th, uh, which was originally going to be the same date I was going to put out my entire EP, uh, which is also called Loud. But at the beginning of the year, I picked 7-7 seven, seven, just because it's like a good number, 7-7-17. Seven, seven, and I moved the album to that date just for the future. just feels like it's a good number. Uh, so we just released the music video on April 25th and we did a release party at the Nashville Film Institute and I invited the cast and the crew and we played it and had a DJ come and it was it was really fun. Oh, that's awesome. A week ago, yeah. So what's the process for you to write some of your songs? Well, I so sometimes like yesterday, or I, I guess two days ago, I woke up and I had a dream and it was like rapping and some songs, something... I'd been out the night before at a nightclub, so I was listening to a lot of music. So I think that when I went to bed, that music played itself into my dreams. When I woke up, I had a dream song. So I sung it into my phone. And there's been times in my life where I've actually written from that. Other times, I'll have people email me instrumentals they've already created, like DJs. And I'll write over something they've created. Although, if I don't like it, like if I can't hear something naturally, then I just won't write yeah. on it. But sometimes... Sometimes it will like it will be very symbiotic with me and the beat, and all of a sudden something will come into my head. So what I found, and I would give this advice for other people that are trying to be songwriters, is if you're working with a collaboration like that, like I will do just a little bit at first because I've sat down and write an entire song and spent hours with someone else, and then sent it, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't like it." So I'll just record into my phone a little baby idea and then send that to the producer and see if they like it. And if they say yes, then I'll, now I keep, keep working on it. It was like trial and error. Okay, cool. So like you were saying, your uh, EP is about to be released. What was it like creating your uh, new project? Yeah, the project is a combination of like 12 songs, uh, or actually 10 songs that I wrote over the course mostly of 2000 and um, 16. Uh, so I wrote most of the songs in 2016. Um, they stem a lot around an ex-boyfriend of mine that was an on-again, off-again boyfriend uh, that I dated through 2014 until we finished dating this year, 2017. So a handful of the songs are about him. Um, and they were written usually either like over a guitar in a co-write with someone here in Nashville. Uh, I think actually everything was written like that way. So yeah. Keep, keep asking me questions. <laughs> so what is your uh, favorite thing to do in this career and why? Like recording, music video shoots, performing? Yeah, I like, um, I like songwriting 
because it's just creative and you can channel what you're feeling, your emotions to music. And then I love singing, although I do get tired of singing songs in a recording studio setting for like a whole day, you know, it just yeah. kind of wears your voice out. Um, but I do enjoy the process of um, recording songs. And then music videos is fun too. Like I just started really getting into music videos last year. I hadn't made one until last year. And at first I was making them for cover songs. I did a Justin Bieber cover and I did a uh, Kanye West Estelle cover. And I was getting like really excited and making these over the top music videos for covers, which felt like a little silly when I should have been putting that energy into my own music. So this year I'd made a decision not to do any more covers and just make like quality music videos for my own original songs. Okay. Mainly because also I found out every time I put a cover up on Facebook, it would get deleted anyway. So I felt like I was making music and getting banned from even sharing it. No, I understand. <laughs> That's happened to me a couple times. Mm -hmm. So uh, what was, so you must have gotten like a lot of publicity, like you were saying, from being on the uh, MTV's Real World, Real World Denver. What was that change like for you? From coming out of the show into like the next chapter of my life? Yeah. Yeah. So I met the real world producer. His name was Jim Johnson um, at a rap party. Like when the show's over, they throw a party. I had a conversation with him and I was like, what should I do now that the real world is over? And for me, I had wanted to be a singer. And so he told me, he's like, whatever it is you wanted to do, go do that. And so I thought about that. And I, I also wanted to work in the music industry just in general. My uncle's an artist manager and he managed Amy Grant. So I think at that time in my life, I didn't really believe I could make it in the industry as a singer. Uh, one reason was when I was a kid, there wasn't really openly gay, successful artists. Like I would argue Adam Lambert was one of the first to actually be openly gay from the beginning, you know? And a lot of them came out after, like Ricky Martin and Lance Bass. So for me, knowing I was gay from a young person, I just never saw that as an achievable dream. Um, I thought it'd be much more achievable to just work in the music industry. And so I was at an MTV event and I met the president of MTV and he asked me, what do you want to do with this opportunity in your life? And I was like, well, I'd love to work for MTV. So he set me up on a job interview at MTV and I got hired to work for Logo TV, which is the gay network they own as a music news blogger for the website newnownext.com. I did that for two years. And I was interviewing an artist that got signed to a record label called Astroworks. And I interviewed him about his recent record deal. And then I ended up ironically finding out that Astroworks was hiring and I got a job at Astroworks. And so for the next two years, I worked at a record label. I was the president's assistant and it was a really hard job. I worked uh, for David Guetta, Kylie Minogue, Swedish House Mafia. They were our biggest artists at the time. And, but I always still, you know, still I wanted to be a singer. Uh, and it was, I found out in a record label, like you don't really tell anyone you want to be a singer if you work at a record label. You got to keep that kind of to yourself. You're just yeah. there to work for other artists. Um, but I started during that time in my life learning how to DJ because I was working around superstar DJs like David Guetta, Swedish House Mafia. And so I started DJing around New York. And I also started hanging out with a lot of artists that were actually, 100% going after their dreams, whereas I felt like I was kind of 50% going after mine. And I had a conversation with an artist who later became pretty famous. His name is Carson James. He was on a Kaiko song. And he was like, why are you working at a record label if you want to be a singer? You should just be a singer. And I realized I was kind of going about it the wrong way. And I left my job at Oxworks. And I just, at that point, and today, I've just been going after being a singer 100%. That's awesome. So uh, how do you want your uh, relationship to be with your supporters? Yeah, I mean, I hope people resonate with my music. I, um, I try to write from, so I grew up in a Christian community. Uh, my father and my mother are both very strong Christians, and my uncle manages, Amy, um, well, he managed Amy Grant, but he manages Michael W. Smith. And I like artists like Katy Perry, who started from, like, a Christian, but they went pop. I've always kind of, like, hoped that that could be a place for me but what I'm saying is with my music I try to write not necessarily like everyone needs to be a Christian because I'm not like that holy roller kind of a person but I try to just write like positive messages in my music and like I'm not the kind of person that's going to be talking about doing drugs or like I'm not trying to 
I'm not trying to push like a negative agenda. Like yeah. I just recently heard an interview where Miley Cyrus had said she was going to try to spread positivity in her music. And that's like always been my mantra from the beginning is to try to like, try to like, I, like if I could be like a humanitarian through my music, that would be a cool thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you have a specific social media platform you use to stay connected? I'm on Instagram probably more than any of my other social media platforms. I Instagram a lot. Like some of my friends are like, your Instagram stories are intense. I'll just, <laughs> you know, whatever I'm doing, I post it on Instagram. Nice. So what do you hope to gain out of this music career? Say, so say, my music career? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, my dream would be get a Grammy. That's like pretty high up. I would love to be on a Disclosure song as a singer. That's like dream. Um, perform at Coachella, like big EDM festivals, and get to a place where people are like singing my music back to me in a crowd. Like that would be, those would all be like really cool career achievements. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any like last things you want to tell your supporters? Um, well, my EP is coming out this summer. I've already been writing this year. I've written 33, maybe 40 songs this year already for what would be the next project. Uh, I'm going to LA in June to write and record. And then I'm going to be in New York the week of my release doing some TV performances, which is exciting. Um, on June 11th, I'm singing at Milwaukee's Gay Pride. Uh, Betty Who, 10,000 Maniacs, Todrick Hall, and Steve Grand are also in the lineup, which is cool for me. Uh, those are like, and I have a song coming out in June by this Swedish DJ named John Dahlbeck. He's produced for Lady Gaga, and he took one of my songs and just made it really cool. It's called Anyone Would Know, so I'm really excited for that to come out. Well, awesome. Thanks for uh, taking the time to yeah. do this interview. I appreciate it. I'm sorry it was so hectic. Hopefully it was fun because it was so wild. Awesome, thanks. Bye. Really nice to meet you. You too. Okay, bye.